Bueno, ya estamos en vivo en Facebook. Eh, el día de hoy les quiero presentar a Fernanda y Peter. Ellos son los representantes de GMC en Australia. Nos van a estar contando un poco sobre sus programas. Es una escuela espectacular que se especializa en artes, en diseño, en producción audiovisual. Así que a todos una gran bienvenida. Eh, mi nombre es Paula Gaete. Hoy estoy acompañada de María Soledad quien eh, me está apoyando con Blue Studies International. Para los que no nos conocen, somos una agencia de estudios en el exterior. Así que le doy el paso a Fernanda ahora, que nos va a mostrar un video sobre GMC. Hello everyone. Um, just share my screen with you. It took me two weeks until I felt like I sort of blogging. It took me years to find something that I actually enjoyed, and I stumbled upon uh, JMC in my entertainment business course. I heard JMC the first time in Indonesia after a friend from a student expert. It had been like just a week since I've been in Australia. I was like new to everything. Then going into a new place with different people around me it was a bit intense, but everyone was really nice. Australia being the one furthest from Sweden was the coolest option. I came into JMC with a very set idea of what my career should or would look like. And having opportunities to collaborate with other people in other industries showed me that there's so many different options. I was a very easygoing person to begin with. And so I just said hi to literally everyone. It just looked like something really fun something more hands-on rather than purely academic. I want something that can give me a really big connection to the industry. There was a good balance of practical and theoretical subjects. I can really feel like at home where I was surrounded by like-minded people who made me feel like I was definitely in the right place. You get to find people that you really click with and you learn so much about just people, um, talking to different people from different walks of life. They would say, oh, I have this music, I'm interested in making a music video, and would you be able to make one with me? I'm like, yeah. And that's where things just start to get a lot bigger for me. The lecturers are industry professionals, so not alone do they lecture you, but they also tell you about uh, what it's like out there in the industry. I thought I know a lot about music, but after I study here, it turns out there's a lot of things that I didn't know. It was just there. People were willing to help, so a mix of um, nervousness and excitement, I suppose. Just totally opened my eyes to to like a new culture, and that's such a, yeah, that's such an asset to have as a musician to realize that I was very uh, culturally exposed to a lot of people, to a lot of events, to a lot of food, especially. One of my favorite things. Um, that I love in Sydney would be the food. Obviously, with the weather being this nice and having sun every day, it's something I feel very uh, grateful for, especially moving from cold Europe. Easy to get a job and really give me exposure to the industry. To be honest, JMC has really helped me a lot. I keep reflecting and seeing that musically I've grown so much. After finishing, I mean, you just realize what a, what a luxury to, to have that sort of everyday life where you get to just fully focus on all these creative things. People get to chase their craft and explore their craft and expand their craft in the way that they want to, as long as they just put themselves out there. Pau, estás muteada. Disculpen. El webinar lo vamos a hacer en inglés, pero si tienen alguna pregunta, la pueden escribir en el chat box en español y lo vamos a traducir por ustedes. Perfecto. Thank you so much, uh, Fernanda, for that video. I think it gave us a little view about how GMC works and the kind of courses that you have. I think, Peter, you, you want to have... Um, overview about the, about the school. Yep. Thanks, Paula. Um, well, good morning or good evening, everybody, where, wherever you are. 
Um, it's nice to have you here. I'm, I'm Peter, I'm the director of international at JMC Academy. Um, Paula, just stop me anytime when you're ready to translate. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do, we're, we're going to be fairly casual today and um, try and make this as interactive as possible. I'm going to give you a little introduction to what JMC is. And then we're going to go on to some, some questions and, and answers about you know, the cost of study, the careers of, uh, in the creative industries in Australia. And, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about some of the jobs that our alumni are doing. So to kick off, I'll just share my screen, find my PowerPoint, there it is. Uh, so you can see that JMC delivers degrees, uh, diplomas and degrees and a master degree, as well as, as the full range of bachelor degrees, all in the creative industries. And these are the courses that we do. The, the first four, audio engineering, contemporary music performance, songwriting. Well, the first three are you know, very related to sound entertainment business has its roots in the music industry, but it's now developed into some, something much broader to cover um, most areas of um, entertainment, including the film industry, of course. And then the last four animation games, uh, design, visual communications and film and television production, uh, um, obviously around the digital visual media and for us, the, the, the most popular courses with international students are audio engineering, um, uh, contemporary music performance, and film and television production. So they're, they're really the, the, the ones that have the most interest from international students, but we have international students in all of the other courses as, as well. Okay, we also have another school in Sydney, which is very specialised in, uh, it's an acting and film school mostly. Um, most of the international students come into acting or um, filmmaking uh, programs, uh, but we also have a theatre production course as well. It's a smaller program, but that's all integrated on the one campus and that's that's where students really get the opportunity to collaborate a lot because filmmakers are looking for actors, actors are looking for, for theatre or, or film opportunities to practice their craft. Just about campus facilities and, and I'd say, look, not just about JMC, but uh, if, if you're looking for somewhere where you're, you really want to study hands-on um, courses in the creative industries, you really should be looking for somewhere that has very good facilities and very specialized facilities. Um, a, a lot of universities have courses that are very much more theory based and not as practical, even though our bachelor degrees are bachelor degrees and our master's degree is a master's degree, we still have a very high um, a, a, a high proportion of the program is dedicated to actual, you know, practical experience. So, so you should be looking for things like, you know, an, an audio studio that has advanced facilities, like like the one that you can see here, film and television editing suites, animation labs, a green screen um, recording studio for film and television students. Um, and there's a, in the top right hand corner there, you can see um, the, the live room that's attached to the control room that I just showed you with that uh, SSL duality recording desk. Uh, bottom left hand corner, there is the, uh, the JMC Academy Sydney campus. Something else that you might want to look for um, is a school where you also have the opportunity to, to have study experiences in other countries. So you may be coming from Chile or Colombia um, to Australia to 
to, to study uh, a degree program, but you might also want to look for an opportunity to, to go somewhere else as well within your degree. And, and these are some of the opportunities that we have. We has, have some really big um, study tour programs to Los Angeles for film students and to Japan for songwriting students and for animation and game students. We have a songwriting program in, in the Netherlands, for example, exchange programs. So, you know, I really recommend you look for things like that. Now that's the end of that initial part of the presentation. Um, when, when we come back next time, it'll either be to look at some of the other details about fees um, and careers um, and our alumni stories. So. I guess back to you, Paola, to for the yeah. questions. We don't have any questions from the audience yet, but yep. I would like to know what level of English do I need to involve one of your programs? Sure, I can I can answer that. So um, for we, we have, as Peter mentioned, we have different courses. So we have diplomas and bachelors, and for those, the level of English is um, equivalent to IELTS 6.0. Um, so yeah, students can do different uh, tests, but th that's the, the equivalence that we are looking for. And for the master, uh, it's actually 6.5. So again, students can do different different tests. They, they can do PT, they can do different things, but uh, that's the, the average we are looking for. Perfect. And I guess worth, worth noting that we have um, partnerships with a lot of ELICOS English language schools here in Australia too mm -hmm. that students can can do a, a pre-academic course okay. with them so without needing to do you know a, another major test. O sea, si no tenemos inglés, podemos estudiar inglés y seguir el camino hacia GMC. Siempre vamos a tener a, alguna opción. Um, y, about the about the scholarships do you have any scholarship for latin american market i'll take that fernanda if you like <laughs> um look we we don't have specific scholarships for the latin american market but our our fee reductions for next year at least for february commencement is going to be fairly significant um so rather than $11,300 per trimester, for students who start in February, the, the fee will be $9,000. So it's about 20% reduced. Mm -hmm. And we also have, and then we'll, we'll see how we go and, and we'll be looking at the June intake as well, but we haven't you know, set, set a policy for that yet. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, the, the other area of scholarship, we have some small, scholarships of around $3,000 mm -hmm. um, tied to um, evidencing some, some, kind, some uh, or a high level of, of skill in, for example, film and television production or um, in writing for social media and things like that. So, so that we, we'll run that scholarship um, again next year, uh, I think for the June intake. That's amazing. Um, and Peter, you told us that you have um, based in in Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. What would you That's say right. the main difference between each campus? Um, in a few weeks, nothing. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, because we've been building the new um, the new JMC campus in Melbourne for mm -hmm. a few years. Uh, it's directly behind our existing campus. It's almost completed. And when we move into that building, um, because the existing, the existing Melbourne campus is the oldest of the three, um, but when we move into that new building, all of the campus will, campuses are going to be very similar. So, um, you know, much larger, much, much more modern, much newer. Um, all, all of the courses, the same courses are, are delivered on every campus. So the facilities are basically the same. Even in the older um, Melbourne campus, mm -hmm. the, the facilities are basically the same. Perfect. We actually have a question from Facebook now. Um, Dan is asking, hello, 
what music programs does DMC have? Fernanda? Yeah, sure. yeah. So um, we have uh, two different courses that students, uh, musicians can, can study. So one is the contemporary music performance course. So we have a diploma and a bachelor for the one diploma being the first two uh, terms, uh, the first two trimesters of the bachelor. Um, so this course is all about being uh, on stage or being a record recording artist. So just, you know, playing your music, performing, be out there and, and, and you know, literally putting your face and your voice and your skills um, out there. Uh, and we also have the songwriting course. Uh, so for those students who don't necessarily want to be on a stage or, you know, literally putting their face there, um, if they prefer to just to work kind of more behind the scenes or, or even to complement both things, they can also do the course. Um, so they can, they can choose maybe songwriting uh, just to improve their skills. We have a uh, very, uh, a very successful case. I think Peter can probably mention that later on about mm -hmm. a student who was already a recorded artist. She came to, to Australia, she did the songwriting and she's recording in English now. So um, yeah, so students can choose um, if they, what they want to do, if they are already musicians or singers and they just want to um, improve their songwriting skills, they can go for that. Or if they just want to be on stage, they can choose a course that focus on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, for song, yeah and, and the songwriting program is interesting because, you know, there's, there's opportunities to be mentored by, you know, already existing successful songwriters. And, and so it's quite, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a, um, I was going to say comp complex is not the quite word, but it's a very focused course but students still up to a point have to develop their performance skills as well, because to be a songwriter, most songwriters play a bit of guitar or, or piano, but when they come in, they're not required to have the same level of performance skill that the performance students do when they're auditioned. Perfect. Uh, I was just going to ask about that. Do they need to do an audition to get into GMC? To, for music, yes. So the head of the department needs to see that fundament, fundamental talent that can be developed. Um, so we don't take beginners into the course. Mm -hmm. And for songwriters, as I said, they don't need to perform to the same level, but they, they have a choice. They can audition or they can submit two original songs that they've already written. And so the... Perfect. Yeah, the entry selection will be based on on those two songs rather than the performance. And how does the audition work for the international students? Do they send a video? Do they, how, how do I do it? Generally, that, that's what happens. Um, uploading a video of two contrasting songs to YouTube or, or send the, 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 the video file. Um, you know, you, you can, we've even done some live, you know, we've done some streamed live auditions um, with some students at a partner school in Japan. Yeah. But if they're in Australia, definitely come into the campus and do the audition there live. Perfect. Sorry, my <laughs> computer got froze. That's all right. <laughs> So I didn't hear the, the last question, but yeah, I I think you were talking about if the, the audition has to be presential. I, I didn't catch that, Paula. It, the auditions need to be... Presential. They, they have to go to the university or they can send it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Can depending on where they, where they are, Paula. So if they are in Australia, we prefer them to come to the campus and do the audition live. Um, if they are uh, in a, a different country, then they can send a, a link or they can just record something and send to us the YouTube link, for example. Yeah. I think she froze again. I, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe. Yeah, oh. yeah she froze. <laughs> But we have another question here. Yeah. Um, we already talked about the ILTs, but 
Someone's asking here, if I have a 5.5 IELTS, can I get an advanced diploma or what can I, what can she do in order to get in? Look, uh, with 5.5, that would open up the way to do film studies at AFTT because AFTT is a vocational program. So the film program is a diploma, a diploma or advanced diploma. Entry would be 5.5 overall. For JMC, it's, it, it, it's six for everything. Maria, you're on mute. Sí, yeah. Yeah. estaba aplicando, eh, Peter, que sí para algunos pueden funcionar el 5.5, pero para el resto es 6 o 6.5, dependiendo del programa. We'll see if we have more questions. Well, while we wait, I would like to know, uh, how's like the student life in, in campus? Like, I know right now it's very different, but usually, how is it? Well, it, it, it's very different now, but it's different by city. So, you know, Brisbane's all, almost completely open and, and basically everything on campus. But Sydney is close to that. Um, you know, obviously with a COVID safe plan in place, um, social distancing and everything. Um, so Sydney's sort of, yeah, a little bit less, but pretty close to where Brisbane is, whereas Melbourne's completely closed right now, so so it, it really varies. But um, you know, in in terms of the campus life, um, you know, uh, I think on maybe on, on those photos of the facilities that I showed, um, lounges and libraries and um, breakout areas, and then you know the the new Melbourne campus will have its own you know, barista and cafe. Um, yeah, and outdoor areas on, on the roof of the building. Um, and in, in terms of attendance at classes, you know, students are doing four units at a time and each unit has a three hour class or lecture. So they're only really, they only really need to be on campus between 12 and 15 hours a week. So obviously self-study should be, you know, double that again, but, but that's basically it. Some students are there, particularly music students. They spend a lot of time on, on the campus practicing, you know, um, alone or, or, or with their ensemble groups. Um, animation students often hang around for quite a long time using the animation labs. Other students are, you know, in and out and doing their own thing, so. Does that sort of answer your question? It does, yeah. But yeah. I just heard you say they stay around to work at the laboratories and, and everything you have. So the students are allowed to use everything even though they're not having a class like right that moment? Oh, definitely. If uh, Unless the facilities are being used for a class, mm -hmm. um, you know, then, then they, they have free sort of access. Recording studios, um, rehearsal rooms, they need to book usually because there's always a lot of demand for recording studios. But, but for the other stuff, it, it's pretty flexible. That's amazing. My good back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> so, so sorry. Um, I don't know, Sally, if, if you saw the message from Kodapi. No. No, I haven't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, one of the, the person that are attending the, the webinar directly is asking, what it does it take to work with DMC? Or if you're looking for hiring someone as DMC, but as a teacher? Ah, well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I can answer that because it's, it's so far out of my area, um, the heads of the department, mm -hmm. each department are usually responsible for, for um, hiring the lecturers. So, you know, I mean, the, the best thing is if, if there's somebody there who's looking for, for work, um, send us, send, send International their CV and we'll, we'll pass it on to the relevant 
head of department in, in whichever city that person's located. I'm assuming they're located in Australia. We don't know, I guess. No, we don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. You can but, you know, the, where you are. Yeah. So, so, yeah, just send it to international at jmc.edu.au. Perfect. We actually have another question in Facebook. Someone is asking you, asking us if there's any way to homologate the university studies in Latin America with you. A any way to, what was it, Paolo? To, to do what with this? Like if I study um, songwriting here in Chile, yep. can I use part of the, those studies and go to UMC and finish my... my oh, yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The head of the department would have to have a look at the content of the subjects or the courses that that person had studied there in Chile. So, and then then make a judgment based on that. It's it's always easier if it's if it's a higher edu you know like university or a vocational course that's mm -hmm. registered, accredited, and then we can look at the content and see you know what the match between the two is, but we, we, we do that regularly. That's perfect because I think most people, when they think about songwriting or digital design, they think it's like a technical person, not actually a bachelor. Because mm. we, we used to have this bachelor in um, health, bachelor in law, and not careers that are like so different like the ones that you offer. Yeah. How would you, like calm down uh, a father that wants their child to go to a traditional career instead of. Yeah, I mean, that's a common thing, isn't it? Um, I, it's really difficult when the student has a talent and a passion for one thing, but the parents want them to do something that they're really not interested in um, because often the student then fails in the course that they don't want to do and then they end up coming to us anyway um, so you know a, a year's been lost or two two years has been lost and they end up in the same place so um, and, and and of course you know in in terms of the career in in creative industries it comes down to passion and talent and enthusiasm and energy and commitment so um, you know, I think if the parents see that in, if that, that their child has all of those things, then their potential for being quite successful is high. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree totally with you. And I think uh, Maria also. Um, we have another question. Do you realize like collaborative projects between different areas, like for example, mixing entertaining with music, film and television with the band that it's on songwriting. There's, there, there are those collaborations, you know, within the course, if the film students are going to make a music video, for example, um, you know, or, or animators need sound for an animation, but then there's all of the informal collaborations. Um, which just naturally occur um, when, when, because musicians all, are always looking for the opportunity to be videoed, you know, professionally. Um, and songwriters are looking for bands to play their songs. And so there's, there's more, you know, that, that kind of collaboration. But as I mentioned at AFTT in Sydney, you know, there's just, there's collaboration all the time between film, theatre, and acting students, it's just a natural thing. That's that's the way that the campus is set up to to enable um, that to happen. That that's the sort of the reason for being for having those courses in the same place. And yeah. speaking of like different areas, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, can I apply two courses at the same time, like to two different programs at the same time? Say I want to do performance and songwriting. Well, yes, because because the 
songwriting is a major in, in, in basically the music program anyway. And the foundation of that is in performance. So, so in, in that case, yes. And in games and animation, you know, there's, there's a lot of crossover, um, but, but you, you know, you specialize in one or the other. But um, if you're saying music and film, that's very difficult. That that because those those courses are very distinct, and the only way to do two, you know, on, on we we would never allow a student to do a double load of study, for example, because that would just set them up for failure. So within some courses, yes, um, but generally no. Perfect. Um... Someone is asking, I don't know if it has been asked before, but she would like to know if the, the programs have professional practice. Um, if you're talking about internships, yes. Uh, in trimesters five and six, there, there's the opportunity as an elective, you can do an internship. So an internship unit, but there, there is a minimum academic requirement um, and also the student needs to be recommended by the head of the department. So we won't put poor performing students in with our industry partners as interns, because that would be, you know, we wouldn't be too popular if we did that. Yeah, but if the student's performing well and the, the, the head of the department feels they have the personality to operate well within that work placement, then, then they'll be recommended. Perfect. Uh, Peter, you were mentioning a couple of minutes ago that you have some students that are actually now like big stars. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. so the, uh, yeah, I, so I can run through the alumni uh, stories if you like. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah? Okay. It's something really interesting about the GMC school. All right. Uh, where are we? Okay, so this is, yeah, this is a really interesting story because Scott uh, was a student in Sydney and he ended up um, being an art director on Game of Thrones at um, HBO. So, uh, everybody in the world right now knows Game of Thrones, but he started off, he went to the US. Um, he started off working at MTV and then went to HBO and worked on Game of Thrones. And he's now, uh, as it says there, he's at Rolling Stone magazine as creative director and head of UX design. So great story. Um, this is Etty. This is sort of one of our favorite graduates. She, she studied um, entertainment business management in Melbourne. She was a very good student, uh, outstanding student, for, originally from Norway. And she went, uh, she did an internship at Ditto Music um, in Melbourne, an online music distribution company, which is, has a global presence, um, head office in the UK. She was employed after she graduated in Melbourne, and then they sent her to um, Stockholm to set up, help set up the Scandinavian headquarters for Ditto Music. And she's a big, you know, we're, we're in regular contact with her. She's uh, a, a really strong advocate for JMC. Um, Sahan was one of our first cohort of graduates from our games program. Um, he's an Australian student and um, from Melbourne, and, and he now works at EA Games in their um, in their studios in Melbourne. EA Games um, has you know studios all around the world, and one of the big ones is in Melbourne. You know they produce FIFA World and Battlefield and Need for Speed, and uh, you know a whole bunch of other really well-known games. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I've lost that slide. Let me just, um, let me just go back. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Um, if, if you just give me a minute, I'll just find the slides that I was looking for. Um, no problem. Uh, okay, it's not actually on that presentation. Um, well, you are looking for it. We have another question. Someone yep. is asking if you have contact in the industry to help the, um, the students looking for an internship or a job after they, they studied at GMC. Well, we do have, um, of course, the internships um, within the courses um, are set up by the heads of the department through their industry contacts. Um, or the student can source uh, an internship themselves if they have connections, um, if they have, you know, introductions, um, and then the head of the department will work with that organisation to, you know, set up the formal part of the program. But for, um, for post-study um, employment, that's something that, um, that students themselves you know, have to source. It's it's sort of it, it ends with the internship. Hopefully, you know, the internship might go well, and they might get op you know offered a yeah an, an opportunity after they um after you know after they graduate, depending on how it goes. Now I'll just share my screen again, and all right. So this is, we're sort of back to, we can see Sahan there, the, uh, the game developer, but you know, next to him on, on the left is, um, and one of the students that actually came through an articulation program um, from Malaysia, um, who's working uh, as an animator at Lemon Sky, another big uh, game production facility uh, in, in Melbourne. And I'll go, this is just a, a few of the games, the, the small games that um, students have created within the course, which are now you know, downloadable, um, a couple of them from Google Play that can be played. Um, here we've got um, on, on the far left side, um, Edo, who studied um, audio, uh, did his, his um, degree in, in audio engineering, but he was quite interested in sound for film. And when he went back to Indonesia, he opened um, a, uh, his own commercial recording studio in Jakarta, but he became very interested, as I said, in he was interested in sound for film and he eventually became um, a film producer. So it's, it's a really good example of the crossover between the different courses, how they kind of interact and how you can move within the creative industries and not necessarily be, be just pigeonholed in, you know, one, one particular area. On the far end, on the right hand side, uh, Peter there, he works um, with, with a hearing aid company. So a completely different area of, of audio. So audiology in his case. Um, so something that we don't usually think of when we think of sound recording and sound production, um, sound design, um, music or uh, sound production for radio, film, uh, television, animation, games. So completely different area. And this is Aldo. Um, uh, he is an Australian student and he's now audio director at Ubisoft in, in Canada. So, and you can see the, the list of the games there that um, Ubisoft create and everybody I think knows um, Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed and um, Black Flag, anybody who plays games anyway. Um, I'm going, this is the story that um, Fernanda was alluding to, um, uh, Patravi Earth. She was already um, a very well-established recording artist in, um, in Thailand. Um, 
already had a number of big hits, but she wanted to learn how to write, wanted to learn more about songwriting, but also about songwriting um, in English. So she came to Melbourne and studied songwriting. And uh, to be honest, we didn't realize how big a star she was when, when she was in Melbourne. So she was quite anonymous and could study, you know, without being bothered. Um, but yeah, one of, one of her hits was actually written um, while she was in Melbourne with us. So, and now she's, she's um, not a global um, superstar, but she's, uh, her music's traveled considerably more outside of Thailand now, and particularly in, you know, very well known in places like Singapore. Um, and there's just a few more stories there. Um, the, with Jenny, who's signed to Universal, Amara, who's very prominent in um, uh, composing music for, for TV programs. The third guy, Aniket, um, he came from India and actually he came with his band. So three members of the band all came together um, and studied in, um, in Melbourne. And, uh, but he's, he's really, his career has really taken off just in the last couple of years in, um, with, in ses session and, and touring, you know, touring um, with, with major artists. And then Jess and Matt on the end, very well known um, Sydney duo, and they're signed to Sony Music. And there's Eddie again. Um, if we've got time. So Jason here, the third one, um, he went off to, I mean, he worked really hard during his entertainment um, business degree. He during every break, he wrote letters to agencies in LA trying to get work um, with the major artist um, management companies there. And then uh, eventually he got a job with Untitled Entertainment in LA and that they managed Madonna, Ashton Kutcher, Simon Baker, Naomi Watts. Um, they, interestingly, they had a lot of Australian uh, film stars on that they were managing as well. So that's just a, a quick overview. A quick overview, yeah, yeah. Some interesting stories there. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things that I really like about DMT is the, the stories about the alumni. Yeah, we like them too. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and that's great. I, I think that's something that will motivate uh, a student that is like thinking mm. to take this course. I'm not sure. Uh, this is a good opportunity for anyone that in this area mm. so, and yeah i don't know if we do if you want to talk about uh, the prices of it me um i'll bring the the slide up and if i can <laughs> find it now because i'm working between two different presentations but then Fern fernanda can speak to that i guess uh, i think it was in the first presentation yeah <laughs> let's find the slide <laughs> and where is the slide uh Um, yeah. About the, the ages, yeah. Peter and Fernanda, do we have to have a specific age to apply? Oh, for sure. It? Sorry. I couldn't hear the first time you, you mentioned that. So, yeah, so students need to be at least 18 years old when they start the course. Um, so after that, they can, they can come at any time, pretty much, of their lives. Uh, but, yeah, they need to be 18 years old when they start with us. Perfect. Thank you, Fernando. And no maximum age. No maximum, yeah. yeah. No. That's cool. Yeah, some, some of our students, you know, we, we, we have mature students that have come particularly from Colombia um, mm -hmm. and through music school partnerships, um, you know, and, and they're not, you know, they're not 18, 19, 20, you know, they're, they're older. Um, so, I, and I think on campus generally, it, it's a, so it's a reasonably mature mix. Mm -hmm. That's good. And what would you say was the most oldest student that you have had so far? Mm. 
Sorry, I'm doing complicated questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I couldn't answer it really. Um, 50 would probably be the oldest that I can remember. 50 years old? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, no, it's never too late to study. To no, 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 no. But I think, um, I think that brings a lot of what Peter mentioned in the beginning. Like sometimes um, students choose uh, a di different field of study and they just have their own, you know, careers in something else. And then at one stage, they just realize they, they have that passion since they were younger and they just want to do something they're passionate about. And then they, when they have the opportunity, they just come. So um, it's never too late. So sometimes um, we, are, we are just wondering if, oh, is it too late for me to go to a different country and do something different or something that I really like? No, it's not. Just, just go for it. If you can, just don't, mm. just do it. don't wait any longer. Just do it. Yeah. I think that's great, great advice. <laughs> so there's the tuition fees, if you want to speak to that, Fernanda. Yeah, sure. So um, as we, we, um, we just mentioned briefly before, so there is, um, these are the, the fees for 2021. So um, we, for the diploma and the bachelor's, they have the same price, um, which is 11,300 per trimester. But of course, because the, the diploma is a lot shorter, then uh, the fee is a lot lower than the, the bachelor. Bachelor can be done in two or three year program. So students can do a more accelerated program in two years. They won't have big breaks between the terms, uh, but they can finish the same, the same uh, it's the same course, the same uh, uh, kind of study they're going to have. It's just a little bit more you know, uh, in an accelerated, accelerated pace. Um, if they choose to do a three-year program, as I said, it's the same kind of courses, the same total fees, but they are going to do a three-year program. They're going to have big breaks between the terms. So it's, they study uh, trimester one and two, and then they have a big break before they go into uh, trimester three. That just helps, especially international students that they want to work or they want to travel around, you know, Australia or other countries that will help them. Um, the certificate three is a short course. It's just 16 weeks. It's kind of an introduction to, to the creative industry. So if you want to do something a little bit shorter or not quite sure what you want to do in terms of a diploma or a bachelor, the certificate three is a good uh, introduction to that which is 2,750 and the master's uh, $11,000 per semester. So for uh, February, 2021, we actually have a fee reduction. So if students enroll for um, in the February intake, instead of paying 11,300, they are going to pay uh, 9,000 for trimester one and two for the bachelor. So um, that will help students a lot with the with the fees in total. So uh, they will have this redu reduction in the trimester one and two, and then from trimester three, they go back to 11,300 per trimester. Perfect. And Fernando, talking about the, the intakes, I, we know that currently we have this global situation where students are not really sure about when they will be able to, to start like for example, if we have a student that wants to apply today for the first intake of next year, they will be able to move it to the next intake, intake if, if we still have the same situation or the borders remain closed. So right now we, we do have a few students who are not in Australia, but they have uh, started their studies from wherever they are in, in the globe. Um, so students uh, can apply to do that at this stage if they want to. Uh, if they want to, to start in February, just maybe take advantage of the reduction, uh, the fee reduction and just to start their course, uh, kind of distance learning from, I don't know, Colombia, Chile or wherever they are. And as soon as the, the borders are open, they, they can just come. So they can apply for the visa because uh, immigration right now is allowing students to apply for their visa. So they can get a confirmation of enrollment, apply for the visa. Whenever visa is granted, if the borders are open, they just come. 
but they can start the studies right right well, right now or even uh, February if they want if they, even if they are not in Australia. That, that's a great thing to know. Yeah, it's just, it just helps a bit. Sometimes you don't have to wait <laughs> too long. You know, just yeah. uh, you don't Maybe have to put your life in pause for yeah. too long. Just yeah, yeah you can I just agree. start with that. And uh, and the the remote learning with the students have, have has been. Uh, very interesting process and the students are quite happy with that so the all the the lecturers and and the head of departments they are working super hard to make these experiences you know the, the best they can do and the easiest um they can do for the student they can be for the students so um yeah students are very happy about it so we are, we are really working hard to make sure nobody's you know missing out or kind of being left behind they're just having the maximum out of it. That's great. And all the programs are available online now? Like right now, we... yes, yes. Perfect. I, I wanted to ask that because actually now we're getting some visas granted, which is oh, that's great. For good news because that means that the, the government may be thinking about open the borders or some kind of plan of given the opportunity to the international students to actually go to Australia. And that's why I wanted to ask about that. <laughs> now, ho hopefully the borders will be open soon and then the students will be able to, to come to Australia again. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, as I said, just, just, you can just start studies and, and that's it, easy. Perfect. I don't know if you wanna show us anything else about the presentation or? I think that's pretty much everything, yeah. Paolo. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to pick up on what Fernanda said, you know, it's five months until the next intake. So, you know, a lot of opportunity for things to change in that time. Um, we won't say 100% that, that we'll be delivering online um, in February, and hopefully there won't be a need because the borders will be open and everything uh, and domestically every everyone will be back on campus so we'll just have to you know keep an eye on it and um and update everybody from time to time but um I'd, I'd just like to say just encourage anybody out there um anybody who's who's watching to if you if you have the means if it's possible to try studying abroad and it doesn't need to be at jmc it doesn't need to be in australia um, it just take that opportunity because it will change your life. <laughs> we know that it changes, it, it changes your life. It opens up a world of opportunities, of, you know, global opportunities. Um, if you just uh, are able to take that step, um, you know, face the challenge, have the courage to, to go to another country and, and start a whole new, you know, life experience. Totally, Peter. Thank you for that. Um, I will put on our Facebook uh, a link of Blue Studies in case you want to have more information or you want to appoint a meeting with GMC directly. I know your Fernanda is super open to that in, in case any student has more questions about it. And we can collaborate with the visa process uh, with everything related with get into Australia with DMC. I'm gonna thanks. if we have any other questions. Thank, thanks, Paolo. Yeah, and uh, the slide that I haven't shown is the slide at the end of the presentation that says, please um, contact Blue Studies, get in touch, book a time to talk. Um, we've, been talk we've been working with Blue Studies for well, since before I came to JMC, and that was <laughs> 10 years ago. So, you know, it, it, it's a long and, um, and trusting relationship. So, so definitely, um, please, please get in touch. Well, so Good. far, we don't have any more questions. Well, Thank you so much for your time, Peter and Fernanda. We are really hoping to see you on Expo Exterior in a couple of weeks. Yep. And we will get the chance to talk more with the, with the students directly. And it's always a pleasure to work with you and show a bit more about the DMC too. 
Thanks. Students. Yeah. And thank thanks, Maria, much. for participating too. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for your time. It was amazing. It's great okay, information. Thanks. Ya okay. puse el, el link en Facebook en caso de que quieran contactarse directamente con GMC o con alguno de los asesores de Blue Studies para que los podamos ayudar con su proyecto de estudio en el exterior. Muchas gracias por participar. Nos vemos. Chao. Bye. Chao. Bye bye.